Hi guys, welcome back. Today, I just want to touch base with you about the Living Like Weasels essay one more time. I know you did a couple assignments with this essay. I know you're familiar with it, but I wanted to talk about some of the big picture things um, and just chat about them rather than have another assignment with this essay. So if I were going to create another assignment for this essay, I would probably ask you some things like, who is the audience? What is the speaker's purpose here? What are her main arguments in the text? You already did an assignment that had to do with the subjects that are brought up in this text, so you kind of have an idea already, I think. Um, but I ran into some misinformation online or things that I didn't quite agree with, and I didn't want you to run into those things online and think that they were correct. So I wanted to sort of offer you my own reading of the text, um, evidence-based, of course. This isn't like, a, oh, well, I felt this way when I read it. Um, I wanted to look at some things that are said in the text and talk about possible accurate interpretations. Uh, some of the things that I saw online, I just wasn't down with. So if I were going to ask you some questions, I would ask probably like, who is the audience for this text, right? And that seems pretty straightforward. Probably people like Dillard who are Westerners, right? Living in suburbia or an urban area perhaps where that line between um, human and animal are, are blurred. The line between uh, man-made things and nature gets blurred. Um, it seems like, you know, mankind has taken over. This might be a very urban setting, but we still have things like public parks, um, you know, flora and fauna, especially here in Florida, like, you know, just growing in random places uh, to observe. So probably a Western suburban or urban audience is who Dillard is primarily talking to. Probably not someone who deals with animals on the regular, right? This is kind of a unique experience that she seeks to have the way we would have to as well, you know? So that would be the audience there. For purpose, okay. Certainly one of her purposes is to build or enhance a sense of reverence awe or respect toward nature, um, maybe animals especially, right? Um, to get curious about the relationship that we have with nature definitely could be a purpose. Towards the end of her essay, particularly in the last couple paragraphs, I think she gets pretty explicit about what she wants us, the reader, the audience, to take away from her essay. She says things like, um, that we should be yielding at every moment to the perfect freedom of single necessity. What? <laughs> right? Um, this is a paradox. To yield to the freedom of necessity? That's like the opposite, right? How is necessity something you have to do? A freedom. It seems more like an obligation. The fact that she states this as a, as something that we should hold as a goal in our life, right? And that it's a paradox might suggest that it doesn't come naturally to us. Yeah, it feels like we're fighting to do something rather than totally free and, you know, it's easy to do. So I think that paradox is there on purpose um, to signal to us that, yeah, what I'm trying to say, the way you should live your life, if you're going to live your best, might not come naturally, right? It's, it seems like a paradox, an impossibility, right? Um, what I wanna kind of zoom in on is what she might mean by single necessity. The thing that we have to yield to, and then later on she says, grasp at your one necessity and not let it go, right? So some interpretations of that word necessity that I'm seeing online have to do with your life's purpose, um, something that you feel particularly skilled at, to me, that's a lot of pressure. What if I don't know, <laughs> right? Especially you guys, you're at a time where it's like, oh, declare your major, what are you gonna do for the rest of your life? I feel like most adults that I've met um, didn't know right away, right off the bat, 
what they were going to spend the most time doing, especially in terms of a career or something that they dedicated their lives to, some pursuit, right? Um, their day job, especially a lot of people in teaching. It's funny, um, I went straight into teaching, but I had a lot of weird jobs before that. Um, but I met people who switched into teaching when they were in their like 40s or 50s and they're really happy doing it now. So I think it's a lot of pressure to interpret this necessity as like, you better find the thing you're good at and like, just do it forever. Don't let it go. I just... I have a hard time buying that that's what she means. She had this spiritual experience with the weasel in nature. She had some kind of insight into the way her own mind works um, that she might wanna let go of that overthinking, um, you know, very egocentric self, right? I think that's the epiphany that she had. So it just doesn't seem right to me that she would then say, you better like cling to this one thing. Like it just doesn't seem like a spiritual kind of insight, right? Like find the thing you're good at, do it forever. You know, don't let it go no matter what anyone else is saying, which, okay, maybe, maybe yes. Maybe it is like find the motivation, <clears throat> don't listen to others and don't let your own self-talk get you down if you find something that you really love and you want to do. I'm on board there, right? But I think we can have a more holistic view of necessity and have it not be like your career choice or the one thing you're good at. We're more complicated than that as people, right? Um, I don't like that whole, and it's very Western, very American narrative of like, you know, make it big doing this one thing, this kind of entrepreneurial, um, you know, story that we tell ourselves that that's like, the best way to go about being successful. I think your single necessity could just be being self-aware enough to know when your thoughts are holding you back. Um, being self-aware enough to know what the right thing is that's going to serve you and others best. It doesn't have to be about like getting yours and getting monetary success and like do the thing and, and be motivated in this very like, I don't know, macho, self-helpy kind of way. You know, it could just be um, knowing where you usually hold yourself back and being able to let go and see the bigger picture, right? Um, finding gratitude could be part of your necessity. What I'm trying to say is think about the quality of life you want to have, not the quantity of, of things that you want to accrue, not, not what you want to have to know that you made it um, monetarily to be successful, but what kind of quality of life do you want to have? And that starts with how you think and how you talk to yourself, right? I think that's a necessity that's something to aspire to right um it's more working on yourself and familiarizing yourself with things that you want to let go of rather than you know clinging to this one thing that you have to do forever as a job it that just doesn't seem you know um like something that you can aspire to like so many things could go wrong right so rather than that i think she wants us to focus on the quality of our life and not let go of trying to be the best versions of ourselves, however we end up getting there. I don't know if that makes sense. Am I rambling again? I feel like I watched my other videos back and I was just like rambling on and on, you poor things. I mean, I think it's actually easier to put up with me in class when you have the distractions of your classmates and <laughs> it's not just watching me on a video. Anyways, um, that's kind of what I wanted to say to wrap up living like weasels. That, um, you know, my interpretation of what that word necessity means. So I don't know if you agree with me or not. You can send me a message. I don't know. What do you think? Living like weasels. This week, you're going to read a poem by Mary Oliver. And there are some similarities. Like if we were drawing a little Venn diagram in the center would probably be um, nature in awe or reverence for nature. But also 
there is an argument in that poem for how to live your best life. We had Annie Dillard in Living Like Weasels say things like grasp your one necessity, don't let it go, um, be aware of how your human mind works, right? Um, and I think that Mary Oliver's sort of instructions for living your best, uh, her argument for how to do that in this poem called The Summer Day, the one that you're reading this week, I think it's a lot more simple and like way less pressure. <laughs> it feels like, oh, all right, cool, I can do that, right? So I, I, hopefully you feel that way anyway when you read uh, The Summer Day. It's a, it's a great poem. Um, and again, there is some overlap, you know, how we experience nature, how we view it, our day to day, and there's an assignment for that as well. Um, so that's what you're working on this week, just that poem. And then um, coming up, we'll have some, <clears throat> some podcasts that we're going to listen to uh, or YouTube videos that we're going to watch that also go along with this unit. Um, this unit in general, guys, like... I wanted to choose topics that I thought transcended academia, you know? Um, like, who feels like learning math right now? If you do, no offense. <laughs> um, but I feel like this is a time for the humanities. This is a time for us to be reflecting on and thinking about um, how we can affect our quality of life internally and from home. There's so much pressure to go out, to do, to achieve, to, you know, um, I don't know, find yourself, right? Um, but I think it can be way more scaled back and way more chill than that. So we're looking at these kind of big ideas, consciousness, nature, who are we? Um, how are we related to every other living thing in the world? How are we the same and different from them, you know? These kind of big questions are interesting and relevant and maybe more so now than ever, uh, now that we don't have the distractions of the other things, of the material. So that was kind of my, um, I don't know, my goal for this unit. That's why I chose these readings and these topics. So even if you're not an outdoorsy person and you're like, okay, nature, no, um, you know, you don't have to go outside. It's okay. But these are some things to think about, you know? So that was my idea. Um, again, keep emailing me, Canvas messaging me with your questions. I know I pestered quite a few of you when I saw that you did not turn in your first week assignments. I will not be on your case that much in the coming weeks, but this was the first week and I was a little nervous if you, you know, didn't know how to find things or what to do. So that's why I reached out to so many of you. I understand that some of you wait till the last minute. That is your prerogative. I trust that you'll get it done. So no, I will not be messaging you on the regular like that, you know, a couple days before things are due but this first week I just wanted to touch base with you guys and make sure that you're good so I hope you guys are all staying well um, and your families are too um, and we will be in touch I'm gonna end it there bye guys